Michael Tchaikovsky is an interesting character who tends to divide opinion. He was educated for the priesthood in his native Poland, but had to flee the country on the back of a hay-covered wagon because the monastery that he was a part of had gotten involved in national politics. He was later imprisoned in Rome, then was an exile in France for three years before he came here to Switzerland, where he renounced the priesthood, got married, and then headed across to the United States of America. There he converted first to Protestantism and then later on in Finley, Ohio to Adventism. Having an ex-Catholic priest amongst the church attracted a lot of attention and frequent mentions in the Review and Herald. He worked near the Canadian border with the French settlers before moving to New York City where he worked with the French, Hungarians, Italians, Poles and Swedes and raised a congregation in Brooklyn. James White found him a difficult person to work with, a stubborn character who liked to march to the beat of his own drum. He longed to go back to Europe though and pleaded unsuccessfully with the brethren to send him. He was seen as being too rash, sometimes difficult to work with and not good at handling money. He received several letters from Ellen White that both commended him and counseled him. She urged him not to mark out his own course, but to wait for the counsel of the brethren. Soon after this, he went to a camp meeting organized by the Advent Christian Church and told them of his desire to go back to Europe and they agreed to sponsor him. In 1864, he came over and went to Northern Italy where he worked near Torre Pelizzi for 14 months. He then came here to Switzerland where he worked for about three years and baptized around 40 believers. He raised up several churches, the main one being here in Tramalan. It was organized in 1867 and is the first Sabbath-keeping Adventist church that was organized outside of North America. However, Tchaikovsky had not told the new believers that they were part of a larger church in North America, but one of the believers here in Tramalan found a copy of the Review and Herald in Tchaikovsky's belongings and began correspondence with the church in America. The first letter that he sent was simply addressed, Adventist Battle Creek. And as it began correspondence, it caused much joy to the church in America to hear of the Sabbath-keeping Adventists in faraway Switzerland. He would later run into financial difficulties, both with the press that he had mortgaged and with the Advent Christian Church, who eventually found out that while they were sponsoring him, he was evangelizing with a different message to the one that they held to, and the sponsorship was dropped. He would go on to work in France, Germany, Hungary, and then in Romania, where he raised up another group of converts. He died of exhaustion at the age of 57 in 1876. His legacy is a mixed one. Many of his converts were of the highest quality who would go on to make a significant impact in the church in Europe. He was a hard worker who preached the gospel in new places, but he had some administrative flaws and character flaws that left their mark on the work and those he came in contact with. God did bless his preaching, but the story of his life poses the question, what if? May we listen to the counsel of our colleagues. May we adhere to the inspired counsel and may we work in harmony with the brethren as we forward God's work.